Is it worth upgrading from DDR4 to DDR5 in the current market? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase performance with a drop in upgrade. In this video, my focus will be on determining if it's worth upgrading from an AMD AM4 platform with DDR4 RAM to an AM5 platform with DDR5 RAM. So in addition to showing you benchmarks marks across 10 games at multiple resolutions and graphic settings, I will also show you if DDR4 RAM is a viable alternative for Intel CPUs. And if you stick around, I'll show you how current RAM pricing is impacting value and exactly how far DDR5 prices must drop in order to offer great value, something every PC user should definitely not miss. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the benchmarks, let's first take a look at whether DDR4 is still a viable option for Intel CPUs. In late 2025, there was a significant increase in RAM prices driven primarily by the rapid growth in AI. And in particular, the announcement that OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT, had secured the rights to 40% of the global RAM supply. This was then followed by Micron announcing that they were closing their consumer-focused business Crucial, which was in turn followed by reports that Nvidia was stopping shipments of VRAM to its adding board partners. Furthermore, Samsung and SK Hynix, the other two large memory chip manufacturers, made statements that the global RAM shortage wouldn't be resolved until 2027, and that they do not plan to ramp up production to meet the increased demands of AI, instead focusing on profitability. All of this means that we are likely facing a prolonged period of higher DDR5 prices. So given this new reality, is it even worth upgrading the DDR5 RAM? I explored this question in detail in my DDR4 versus DDR5 Does It Really Matter video, where I tested a kit of DDR4 3600CL14 against a kit of DDR5-7200CL34 with an Intel Core i9-14900K CPU. A nice attribute of Raptor Lake is that it's the only CPU to support both DDR4 and DDR5, so although you need to use different motherboards, you can use the same chipsets, in this case the Z690. When you look at the average gaming performance across 16 games, it's clear that the significantly higher bandwidth of DDR5 memory more than offsets a relatively small increase in latency. However, when you dig a little deeper, you see that the DDR4 3600 kit actually beat the DDR5 7200 kit in at least half the titles, and by relatively large margins, which would indicate that in titles where the GPU is highly loaded, latency becomes much more important to extracting maximum performance. To explore this further, I added a kit of DDR5 6000 CL30 to the mix, and I reran two games. The first was Microsoft Flight Simulator because it showed very linear behavior with speed, and the second was Far Cry 6 because this was the only title where DDR4 memory won at every resolution. When you look at the MS Flight Sim results, you see the linear behavior continue, which would be indicative of a game that is highly bandwidth dependent. However, when you look at Far Cry 6, you see that the increased latency hurts the DDR5 6000 kit, which is indicative of a game that is highly latency dependent. The problem of course is value, and at the time I made this video, the DDR5 kit was only $40 more than the DDR4 kit. However, a 7200CL34 kit is now a whopping $250 or 104% more expensive than a 3600CL16 kit, which completely eliminates any performance advantage. So yes, DDR4 is still a viable option for Intel enthusiasts, especially when you consider that Raptor Lake CPUs perform better than Arrow Lake CPUs in gaming. As mentioned earlier, the focus for this video is to determine if it's worth upgrading from an AMD AM4 platform with DDR4 RAM to an AM5 platform with DDR5 RAM. The test systems being used to run the benchmarks are summarized in this table. Since this is a memory focused video, I selected non X3D CPUs because their performance is impacted by RAM in a more meaningful way. I also selected two sweet spot memory kits with tight timings. For DDR4, I selected a kit of 3600 at CL14, and for DDR5, I selected a kit of 6000 at CL26. Furthermore, I used comparable motherboards from ASUS, with the X570 Dark Hero for AM4 and the X870E Hero for AM5. I also decided to use an RTX 5070 for this video, in an attempt to reflect the type of GPU that most AM4 owners would now be using. This means that the load on the CPUs will be lower than using an RTX 5090, but the results will be much more representative of what AM4 owners are likely to see. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to each CPU. For my AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, I was able to unlock max performance by making the following tweaks. One, I set PBO limits to motherboard. Two, I set PBO scalar to 2x. 
Three, I set the max CPU boost clock override to plus 100 megahertz. Four, I set a negative all core curve offset of negative 30. Five, I turned DOCP on. And six, I changed the Windows power plan to high performance. For my AMD Ryzen 7 9700X, I was able to unlock max performance by making the following tweaks. One, I set the PBO limits to motherboard. Two, I set PBO scaler to 2X. Three, I set the max CPU boost clock override to plus 100 megahertz. Four, I set a negative all core curve offset of negative 30. Five, I turned Expo on and set refresh interval to 65535. And six, I changed the Windows power plan to high performance. A comprehensive step-by-step -step guide for how to implement all of these tweaks and test for stability is contained within my recent What are the best settings for an AMD Ryzen CPU video? These tweaks had a significant impact on performance with the 5800X increasing by around 14% and the 9700X increasing by 24%. So it's definitely something worth doing if you want to extract more performance. In order to thoroughly test the CPUs and memory, I ran the benchmarks at different graphic settings in addition to different resolutions. To place maximum load on each CPU, I tested at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract max performance from each chip. To create a more balanced CPU GPU load, I tested at 1440p with medium settings. And to see if each CPU RAM combo had any impact on GPU performance, I tested at 4K with ultra settings. These resolution setting combinations align well with typical game gamer selections, with 1440p medium settings reflecting what most online first-person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates, whereas 4K ultra settings reflect what most single-player gamers would do with a high-end CPU-GPU combination to extract maximum quality. I also decided against using frame generation for the benchmarks to avoid skewing any of the results. I did, however, use upscaling, but only when it was automatically selected as part of the standard graphics options, which when used is clearly denoted on the charts. Furthermore, for each benchmark, I included the Game Quality Index or GQI metric to help provide additional insight into the relative impact that each CPU RAM combination has on your overall gaming experience. With the test systems ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As I mentioned earlier, I selected non-X3D CPUs as a focus for this video because they are much more dependent on RAM. 
That said, if you do own an AM4 X3D chip, such as the 5700 or 5800 X3D, you may also be wondering whether it's time to upgrade. I explored this question in detail in my AMD 5800 vs 7800 vs 9800 X3D Is It Time to Upgrade video, where I tested the legendary AMD Ryzen 7 5800 X3D against the 7800 and 9800 X3D. As you can see from the benchmarks, the 5800 X3D struggles to compete against the newer AM5 based Ryzen CPUs under heavy load. With the 9800 X3D offering 40% better 1% low performance and over 30% better average FPS. Given this relatively large performance gap, which is highlighted in games such as Microsoft Flight Simulator, it becomes challenging to recommend staying with the 5800 X3D based purely on performance. But what happens when we look at cost? At the time I made this video, the 5800 X3D was retailing on the AMD store for $329, which is around $130 to $150 less than the newer AM5 based Ryzen chips. So if you convert those differences into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then it became clear that the 5800 X3D was still able to offer a better value, even though it fell well short on raw performance. But this didn't include RAM, so if you now include the cost of RAM at current market prices, it's not surprising that AM5 X3D platforms offer terrible value relative to AM4. So if you currently own an AM4 Ryzen X3D CPU, I would recommend sticking with it until DDR5 prices come back down or until you find a game or application that needs more performance. In this video, I tested an AMD AM4 platform with DDR4 RAM against an AM5 platform with DDR5 RAM to see if it's really worth upgrading. When you look at the performance across 10 games, it's clear that AM5 does particularly well at lower resolutions and graphic settings, where the load on the CPU and RAM is highest. At higher resolutions, however, where the load shifts to the GPU, the performance advantage of the AM5 platform goes away, especially in titles such as Cyberpunk 2077. This is an impressive result for a platform that was released more than five years ago and is likely attributable to the lower RAM latency of the DDR4 3600CL14 kit. Unfortunately, this result does not translate into gameplay, with the 9700X DDR5 6000 platform showing just how superior it is across all resolutions. If we now look at professional workloads such as Blender and 7-Zip, the AM5 platform is a clear winner with advantages of over 30%. In fact, this advantage extends to AI related workloads as well, an area that is rapidly growing in popularity. Furthermore, the AM5 platform is able to generate this performance with significantly better power efficiency, something that shouldn't be surprising given that the 9700X is a much more modern CPU. But what happens when we look at cost? The 9700X 6000 combo is a whopping 47% more than the 5800X 3600 combo. If you now convert these platform costs into gaming value or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then it becomes clear that the AM4 platform is able to overcome the significant performance advantage that the AM5 platform has at 1080p, offering better value in gaming. However, when you turn your attention to 4K, the AM4 platform is able to deliver a knockout blow, offering significantly better value with the average FPS per dollar almost 50% higher. So how far must DDR5 prices drop to deliver similar value to DDR4? To answer this question, we can simply plot FPS per dollar versus price. At 1080p and assuming that CPU prices don't change, the DDR5 6000 kit would have to drop by around $100 to deliver equivalent value, which could happen at some point in the future. However, at 4K, the 6000 kit would have to drop by around $300 or back to where it was priced before the recent price surge to deliver equivalent value, something that isn't likely to happen anytime soon. So if you do want the best value option, DDR4 is the way to go. The kits I used in this video were both premium kits with tight timings. So a question you may be asking is, how does the performance change if you use a lower price kit of RAM? To answer this question, I reran Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, a game that heavily loads the CPU and RAM. Starting with the 5800X, I tested additional kits of DDR4 3600CL18 and 3000CL14. As you can see, there is a significant drop in performance when you reduce the speed to 3000 megatransfers per second, even at 4K, and a meaningful drop in performance when you loosen the timings to CL18. So if you're buying a kit of DDR4, I would strongly recommend searching for a 3600 kit with tight timings or manually tuning them yourself. The good news is these kits appear to be widely available online, at least for now. 
For the 9700X, I tested additional kits of DDR5 5200CL36 and 6000CL30. As was the case with the 5800X, there is a significant drop in performance with slower speed RAM for non-X3D chips. At 4K, however, the drop in performance for the slower RAM and looser timings was not meaningful. So is it really worth upgrading to DDR5 if you're on an AMD AM4 platform? The answer is, it depends, even at the current inflated DDR5 prices. If you play games at 4K Ultra with a modern GPU like the RTX 5070 or RX 9070, then there really isn't much point upgrading. There is a small improvement in gaming quality, but it's not something I would recommend paying a premium for. That said, if you're playing competitive titles at 1080p or running a lot of professional workloads, it would likely be a worthwhile upgrade, even though the value isn't there. Which brings us to the fundamental issue. DDR5 does offer a performance advantage, but the value has become much worse relative to DDR4. If you had asked me in early 2025, it would have been an easy question to answer. But in the current market, if you can avoid buying DDR5, I would. The real question is how long will these inflated prices last? And unfortunately, regardless of what anyone online says, there is no clear indication of when this will be over. So buckle up, it's likely going to take a while. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It Upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to live Q&A sessions, giveaways, and much more, please also consider joining our new school community. Bye for now.